Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to do another driver test and review. Today is the SB Acoustics SB29 RDCN C 004. I believe that's what it is. I'll look it up and post it here. Anyways, I am choosing to test this tweeter today because I put it on my top three tweeter list in another video and I hadn't tested it. I don't have very new. Uh, samples of this. I don't have the original packaging really and stuff like that so I just never bothered to test it but we're gonna do that today anyways uh, so check it out. Okay like I said I don't have the original packaging but this is some of the original packaging and how the drivers are kinda held in place and then there's a box that goes over it. Overall this is um, you know the looks match the cost of this driver. I believe they're around 40 50 bucks and uh, they're well built they're beefy uh, they're a neo magnet tweeter so they're a little smaller than a lot of domes uh, although the actual dome itself is 29 millimeters um, they've been in my shop for a while so one this one in particular is quite dusty uh, but I don't think it'll affect the performance if I was gonna do a new build with these I'd buy a new pair but I have these sitting around so here we go uh, they have a bit of a foam backing for placing in the baffle. The dome is supple. It's got a large surround. And then in the center, it's got it's fixed. That's why this is a ring radiator tweeter. So the center is stuck to the fabric. Just like this other ring radiator tweeter here, the center um, pull piece, I guess, is fixed. So uh, I actually had one of these damaged, and I ripped it apart and this is the neo magnet and you can see it's got you can see it has copper in the gap and it's got a fixed center point that the dome assembly attaches to and this is from a tangban tweeter and a dayton neo tweeter you can see the magnets are quite a bit smaller the tang band has ferrofluid in it and i'm just trying to get the ferrofluid i don't know if you can see it in the video but i'm trying to get it the magnetism to react to the ferrofluid Another thing to point out with this tweeter is it responds really well to being put into a waveguide. All my horns and waveguides are one inch, uh, so they would require cutting to mate up to the uh, dome assembly, but they can, can work. Um, I started by CNC in a test baffle, and I ran into an issue with my CNC. It requires about $400 and some work. You've heard me mention this before, but I hate my CNC. So anyways, I went back to the old-fashioned method, which, to be honest, was quicker than if I had used the CNC. I quickly hacked out a hole using a uh, hole saw and then freehand routed because this is just a test baffle. It doesn't have to look good, so I don't need the CNC. I just freehanded it, and I got close enough. That's what I'm doing here. Always use ear protection. This is a boat music anyways, right? Uh, it didn't quite, that's the problem with freehanding, is it didn't quite fit, so I just went back and right there. took out the remaining area I needed. And then I got it to just snugly fit in there. Um, when I do these tests, it's important, especially if you're going to use my data... Um, to design your own speaker, which I'll mention at the end of this video, you can download my files and uh, design a speaker if you'd like. But it's important to uh, understand that the baffle size changes the response. Um, so it's important to note that this is a nine and a quarter inch wide baffle, and I did that because this is a pretty beefy tweeter. You can match this up to a six or seven inch woofer, no problem, which is a, how I imagine a lot of people would use this potentially in a three-way where the mid would be smaller than that but then you've got a woofer down below that needs to be matched up so there's the test uh, this is the results from sample one and we can see that it's got you know a relatively smooth response the response is within plus or minus two and a half db and this is including the baffle effects that I talked about uh, so this is a really good result it's got strong response all the way down to 900 hertz or maybe even lower uh, that's not to say you would use it that low but it tells us that we have plenty of extension down low 
to work with the crossover and blend with a woofer. We can go steeper or nice and shallow uh, slopes with this uh, tweeter and get the crossover we want to achieve. It also has relatively high sensitivity at 92.5 dB roughly and you'll see in sample 2 that there was a sensitivity difference and this one was actually the low one. So 93 isn't unreasonable either um, and and that I should point out that this is a 4 ohm tweeter so although that's high sensitivity really this compares to 90 dB uh, 8 ohm tweeters. This is uh, when I did the distortion test, which I'll show you later. I moved the microphone within 10 centimeters of the baffle, and this is the result I got. So what's happened here is it's become somewhat semi near field, and some of the dif uh, diffraction off the baffle is is lost in the measurement, and it kind of depicts to us what the response is like on an infinite baffle. So you can just see how smooth this response is. What this tells me is if you did use a different baffle dimension you'd probably get an equally good result. Okay, moving on, I switched out samples. I went to sample two and wired it up and took the measurement. Okay, now, <clears throat> as mentioned, sample one was the red uh, curve and the green curve is sample two. And sample two, which actually was the sample with a little bit of dust on the dome assembly, turns out to be more sensitive. We're talking less than a dB and uh, that's at the worst location probably on average maybe half a db like i say they've been on the shelf for a long time who knows but um, it is something to take note that uh, i'm surprised by it but there is a sensitivity difference here and this could cause some issue uh, to the listening experience i then went off axis i believe this is sample one actually but um, I, I did all the off axis measurements and we can see the response that we get here I think I was kind of pushing back the baff a little too far as I turned it. Anyways, what we can see here is that uh, the area around like 1000 to 1500 hertz, some of this is baffle related, diffraction related, some of it is moving the speaker away too far. Uh, definitely in the two to 5000 range, that's all baffle diffraction related. So <clears throat> this would probably improve with a big round over or a chamfered baffle. This is just a straight edge baffle. This is the worst condition you can possibly have. I just wanted to point out in the top octave as you go off axis you get this null being formed here and this is actually something I've experienced with other ring radiator tweeters. Um, I wouldn't think it's audible. Uh, I think that would be incredibly difficult to hear so I'm not worried about it at all. It's just interesting so I point it out and as I mentioned on the V what I've tested the VIFA XT25 you can see that happening on the 60 degree line here and on the 45 degree line here I am uh, ready to do distortion testing and I have to hear how awful distortion testing is and you guys want it so you get to hear it too oh that's just terrible So anyways, as I've mentioned in previous videos, I'm not too keen on showing this data and talking about it. So there it is. You can go back and pause it and look for yourself. Uh, then I did impedance testing because um, if you're going to use these files to design a passive crossover, you need the impedance results. And it also tells us a little bit about the tweeter. So we can see a little bit of a mismatch. Um, sample 1 is the higher impedance and the the red line that is and um, it's possible that that's where the sensitivity difference comes from you can see a little bit of a wiggle at about 11 or 1200 hertz this is in the factory measurements as well and likely due to the fact that it's got a small chamber it's the neo version the resonance frequency fs is about 690 hertz which is really close to the factory spec of 680 hertz and uh, like in all my test videos, I like to just pop this into XM. This is me uh, seeing what the tweeter can do. Um, I've, other than years ago, I have not simulated with this driver at all. So this is completely fresh to me. I'm just seeing what it can do. And I actually kind of botch it to begin with. 
Um, partly me not really thinking straight here and partly me realizing that this tweeter isn't all that easy to work with. I mean, it's easy to work with, but I have experienced easier. There's some tweeters where you can just click a few buttons and bam, you have a beautiful slope on there. So anyways, I did manage to get this thing to work for me. Uh, this is just a second order electrical and an L pad. Of course, there's many alternatives to uh, crossover design, all the different orders and different ways of playing with uh, notches and things like that. I didn't get into that here. This is just seeing what it can do with four parts right off the bat. And of course, I'm not showing it made it up to any other drivers. So nothing, nothing too serious here. Don't copy me. All right, guys. So there you have it. That's the SB Acoustics SB29 RDCN dash C dash zero 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 four. Um, I think it's an awesome performer. I really suggest you check it out. It costs a little more than some dome tweeters, but it's definitely not in the exotic uh, exotic price range. Um, just a couple of reminders. You can get the FRD files from today's measurements off the Dropbox link in the description below. So you can download those, put them into XSIM or something like that and fool around before you purchase. Um, another thing, you can follow me on Instagram. I'm not posting there right now because I don't have a cell phone at the moment, but uh, you can check me out there. I don't go crazy with posts. I don't like clutter the feed or anything like that. I post maybe once a month. If you have any questions about this tweeter in particular, please feel free to post in the comments below. I do try to answer all the questions, uh, so I'll give it my best shot. And stick around for upcoming videos. And while you're at it, check out the Viva XT25 video if you haven't already, since it's so similar to this and also made my top three tweeter list. Thanks guys, catch you later. Bye.